Good evening and welcome to the review of uh, Exotic PC's new Sager. It's the NP9150. It's built on a Clevo P150EM. Uh, as you can see, uh, there's some changes over the previous model. Some things you'll recognize and some things you won't. This particular model that we're reviewing here, uh, it's, it's kind of an in-between here well, for processor-wise. It it's currently has the Sandy Bridge 2670, uh, but pretty soon there may be something new coming out that it can uh, use. Uh, it is also compatible with, uh, with the new, uh, new i-series that, in, that Intel is coming out with. Although we can't talk about it right now, I know you all know what we're talking about. Just kind of giving you a, a, a look here real quick before we go in depth on, uh, on this new guy. But there are a lot of neat features here that, uh, that this uh, particular model uses. And you're probably looking at one of them right now. If you're a fan of Clevo or Sager models, uh, the backlit keyboard is certainly something to jump up and down about. The review model also has a 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, it's, it's pretty standard to come with 8. This model will hold up to uh, 32 gigs of RAM at 1600 megahertz, though, or you can go 16 and 1866. Uh, another new kind of neat thing about this model is this does have the uh, currently the 80 gig M SATA in it. And we're running this with the, uh, the Smart Response technology from Intel. So we're pairing it up with the Intel, uh, it's a 120 gig 520 series, the SATA 3 version uh, drive. So it, it uses those, you set it up kind of in RAID and, you, and it uses those together uh, to improve the performance. It's, it's kind of neat, this one has it. So you're, you're essentially using two hard drives in there instead of, uh, instead of one in a way, at least it's gonna look that way. But it uses that 80 gig drive to improve your your response time performance and, and, it, and it certainly does it's it's a it's a nice little boost uh, one of the other neat things about this particular model is this is the first uh, 15 inch here to have the NVIDIA it's a 2 gig GTX 675 so it's got the the newest mobile latest and greatest uh, graphics card in there and we'll talk a little bit more about that later uh, but it's certainly a, a killer performer, especially for the price. Uh, base price on this one is, is sitting right just around thirteen hundred bucks, just a little over. It's it's pretty impressive. In in that upgrade on the GPU is only a hundred bucks. So uh, for a, a fifteen inch model, around you know just a little above fourteen hundred dollars, you're you're coming out with a lot of, of value here for this particular one. Next thing we're going to go over, we're going to run over some of the uh, input and output ports here. Uh, I suppose we should just start on the back here because there are just a few. Um, as you can see, they did dual vent this. Um, one of the things that's been pretty consistent with the Sagers for years is that they've, uh, they've kind of led the mark on, on GPU and CPU cooling. Uh, one of the ways they do that here is by having two separate vents. And those each have their own separate heat pipe uh, that runs to each of those vents and their own fan. So, um, one of the things that you'll see, uh, especially with this series of Sager, is that it, in high performance, which is what they're built for, uh, temperatures are super important, and this this can certainly run uh, as cool as, as really as it gets in, in this particular performance field. Um, looking here at, uh, at the back, uh, one of the changes that, that you'll see that uh, we've seen from the previous version um, is that uh, Sager has started to put uh, this display port uh, adapter op option on here which uh, was not on the previous model. Um, HDMI of course is the standard and, and it's kind of nice that Sager still does put uh, a DVI output there for some of those folks that uh, monitors don't have HDMI. Alright, as we make our way around the left hand side here uh, of the machine we're going to see uh, something that isn't very common on uh, a lot of computers these days. Uh, we'll see the FireWire port there. Uh, so Sager's gone a little legacy on us, which is kind of nice. A lot of uh, recording equipment still uses that port, um, as do a lot of a lot of other interfaces that um, you know maybe a little bit older. And I know people have been searching for machines. We get questions about that all the time, whether or not they have that port. And sometimes it's a make it or break it. So that's kind of cool that they've got that on there. We've got an Ethernet port here. Nice that they finally tossed in three uh, USB 3.0 ports. 
A couple of them are pretty unique. Uh, the one on the left here, this also has a powered USB port, so it will remain powered uh, throughout uh, being on or, or off, so your machine could be plugged in uh, to a USB device and still powering it even though the computer is off. As we make our way to the right, uh, this is pretty obvious, but the, they did make it a combo port for eSATA, uh, which is nice that they've just thrown another thing in there uh, feature-wise for the input and outputs this has. They did combine that with USB 3.0, so uh, you've got uh, combo USB 3.0 eSATA port there. We've got a standard 3-in-1 uh, card slot reader there with all the standard uh, you know card types that we are using today. As we swing around to the front, you'll notice it's pretty clean in its look. Uh, they don't do a lot of uh, fancy stuff with it or vents or uh, you know lights on the front. We do have a couple of just indicator lights here. It's just battery and, and powered and whether or not we're plugged in. Uh, so pretty clean on the front. As we make our way to the right, uh, as we can see, optical drive here, which of course uh, is available in a couple of different um, options. If your person uh, did not need an optical drive and maybe wanted to go with one of our inexpensive external drives, You'll also have the option of putting a hard drive in that bay, and that's something that, that Sager will do uh, just a variety of sizes. So if you need a storage you know, drive or, or something that's, uh, you, just, you need to expand your, your drive, maybe you're going with an SSD or even a combo like we have here, that 80 gig and 120, but you want more space than that, that's a good option. Of course, you can throw a Blu-ray drive in here because the, the machine does come with a, a 1080p screen, so it is 1920 by 1080. Standard is glossy, uh, but that screen is available in a variety of different options, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. As we continue to make our way over here to the right, you'll see that um, another thing that they've done that's kind of nice is given us a little bit more um, option with our audio card that's on this. Um, this actually is a full 7.1 output capable. Um, they do that by splitting each of these ports here and um, within the sound card options you're able to make those changes so that instead of being a, a microphone input it's actually an output to your front left and right speakers um, or your rears or so you, you're going to set those within that within that uh, driver. Uh, they did put a, a standard USB 2.0 port over here uh, but as far as the, the the part the ports the audio ports standard wise this is our headphone there we've got a microphone <clears throat> If we uh, wonder if we can get in here on that there, um, not not really, but we do have an SPDIF here and a line in. Uh, just kind of making up the the last little guy there. That's not really a port, but that is a standard Kensington lock uh, jack. So for those of you that are in college or just want to lock your your uh, machine up, uh, they do have that feature for you as well. One of the most exciting things I think that um, all of us have really been looking forward to or talking about for years, uh, those of us have been around a while and, and sold and, and used and, and worked with Sager and Clevo, is the addition of this new beauty, the uh, backlit keyboard. And I'll tell you, uh, when Sager slash Clevo does something like this, they're doing it right. Um, they did have uh, the same manufacturer that makes all of the backlighting for Steel Series uh, do their backlighting for them, and it's really, really even, and it's it's just it's actually very functional when it comes to backlighting. Um, I know there's a lot of uh, machines out there today that offer backlights, but to be honest, a lot of them have gone to a less expensive design, making them pretty cheap and and just not very well backlit. Uh, this one here, it it really does a good job of of even. I mean, we're in some lighting here, and we can we can get a pretty good uh, view of even the colors, and and the the lettering is nice and big and and translucent. Uh, a lot of times, the complaints that we've seen is that you know the the letter itself doesn't actually light up enough. Uh, where this one, it it really does. Um, it's it's a huge benefit because I think their customers have been asking for it for years, so they finally got the clue that. Um, people want this, uh, but it, it, it's nice because it doesn't. It didn't really add much to the cost of the unit. It was just kind of a value add that they put in there for us. Um, the response of the keys, I really like a lot. Um, it's it's not your island style uh, keyboard like we've seen in in like the 8150 and and some of the models of old from from Sager. It's it's kind of a, a mixture in between. It does have a nice spacing. Uh, for big hands uh, like mine, it, it, it's not uncomfortable to type on. I don't feel squeezed. The 
island keyboards were, were nice because they had tons of space. Um, but to get the backlit lighting, I'm, I'm sure that they, they had to move to this style of keyboard. Um, but to be honest with you, I really, I really like it quite a bit. Um, there's, there's not, uh, not really any flex to it at all, uh, which is nice. So you can tell when you type on it that it's strong. I just killed the lights here for you so that I could just give you a, a, a real view of what this would be used, you know, like to use it in the, in the dark there, as you can see. I'm standing above it now. It's real bright. Um, I'll kind of zoom in here and, and get you a, a little better view of, of the keyboard here. But it's, uh, like I said, it's, it's very well and very evenly backlit. Another thing that we've seen that's, you know, been a sore spot for a lot of people is that the backlighting hasn't been very even. Um, I'll show you here real quick how to access. Uh, the, there is a, a quite a number of backlight options. It, it's not as extensive as maybe some of the other ones that we've seen, but I'll tell you right now, it, it, it's certainly a lot uh, a lot easier to use. And when I, you're, you're functioning, and then to get to the the menu, you're going to press function and then on your key your number pad there it's just above the eight um, it brings up this screen here where we can we can do a number of things you know if you if you want to to do some of the the more uh, I don't know flashy things with the keyboard you can you can make it do a lot of things where it'll randomize colors it'll dance around uh, I think you call this dancing there you go yeah some of them drive me a little nuts but uh, I probably would just use it steady, uh, but here we can we can customize. Uh, we can show you here customize option over here where you can actually go in here and change <clears throat> change the colors. You don't get a ton of different colors like maybe you do on on the MSI and some of the others, but it's got most of the favorites I would say out there. Um, or you can turn it you, know, you can turn it off, um, but you know you've got your blues and your and your so pretty solid red. Um, pink for those of you that want that and then green and and uh, aqua yellow and then just the regular white um, so you can see how here it's got the three different sections um, you're changing the color for each section they can be different or they can be the same that's that's completely up to you um, but it's it's a pretty nice e very easy to use it's it's not uh, clunky uh, as I would put it. I, I've used some of like Alienware software before and, and I, I really felt that it was kind of buggy and, and <clears throat> just a little more difficult to use and when it comes to you know being user friendly and, and easy. It, it just wasn't. This is very simple. I, I click on what I want to change and I click the color I want to change it to. Very very easy. Uh, and then your standardized options are, I think are just more of a fun thing than, than anything else. Um, but you've got some some kind of neater uh, little options up there if you want it to to be on the flashy side but we'll sneak out of this here <clears throat> and so that's our keyboard uh, it's definitely a huge value add to to this series of computer um, as you can see some of the colors of yellow is even brighter yet than some of the others um, but it's a big bonus and I think something that Clevo uh, lovers are just rejoicing about right now Next thing I'd like to go over is uh, talk to you a little bit about the graphics capabilities of the computer. Uh, this is their flagship 15 inch, so <clears throat> as far as 15s go, it's a beast. Uh, it does have a 2 gig GTX uh, 675 from NVIDIA in there. Uh, it's, it's a very solid performer and, and, and a little surprising to be in this uh, price category for something so powerful. Uh, single GPU, we did run a 3D Mark Vantage score on it here, kind of pre-did it for you here. But as you can see, this is stock clocks, uh, no overclocking whatsoever, and it's running at 1617. So just straight up stock, uh, stock vantage. Um, that's that's pretty powerful. I mean, if we're even thinking back, you know, just a couple of model seasons ago, and they were running the 560, you know, you're only getting, you know, 9,000, if that, uh, you know, maybe 8,500 on the score for that. So they've almost doubled their score, uh, and really not for a ton of money. I suppose we'll have to wait to see when the 680s come out. Uh, there's no speculation on that yet, though, unfortunately. I wish I could give you some insider information, but there isn't any to give on that yet. Um, but for right now, the 675 is, is certainly performing well for the money. Um, we do offer an overclock uh, feature on our website. 
it's really nice for those of you that really don't want to get your hands dirty when it comes to some of that. Uh, let us do that for you. That way we guarantee the, the clock you know, speeds and we guarantee the clocks. And then if you lost your hard drive or you got a virus and to wipe your system or something, we'd help you get everything set back and you don't have to do that yourself. And, you, and if, if something were uh, damaged because of, you know, the overclock, uh, our overclock, we would stand behind that for the length of our, of our uh, one year warranty. So <clears throat> this is our, this is a standard clock. This is what we would, would most likely set as um, the most solid or most stable overclock with the most stable temperatures, things like that. So you can see we're getting 18,452. Um, so pretty nice boost there uh, for, for the overclock on this. Um, we did max it out for what the max max clocks would be. Um, and so that's we, we bumped it up I and mean, you're maybe getting another four or five percent performance. It's not a, not a ton, but uh, you know you can eke a little bit more out of it. Uh, although for someone who were going to be using it consistently and they were using our service, we probably would set it to the the, mo the most stable overclock. Uh, but as you can see, even even running it uh, overclocked to here, our temps weren't terrible. Um, but good scores all around. The the card itself is is really awesome. Uh, I will tell you one of one of the other really uh, cool things about this particular series is we finally have. A GTX 675 and an Intel 3000 integrated card together. Yes, th this does have Optimus, folks. Optimus, uh, it'll go ahead and choose the the uh, graphics capabilities for you, just like the other Optimus uh, machines of your. Uh, we no longer are limited to a low performance card. Uh, you now have the best mobile card uh, at the moment, plus the integrated uh, on the on the chipset or on the chip. It's just. It's a, an outstanding uh, addition, another value add, if you will. They didn't raise the price uh, a ton to have it. It was just another thing that, that this computer can add. So those of you that do need to, to get a little extra battery life out of it, maybe for class or for work or something, um, but yet you still want it to be able to, to perform on, on games or graphics the way, that, uh, the way you would expect a high-performance machine to, this one can finally do it. We've got it now. So... Um, you know, as far as, as graphics performers in 15 inch, this is gonna rock it. Next thing I'll talk to you about here is the screen. Uh, the screen on this, it's, it's a stock glossy screen. Uh, when I first looked at it, I, w I was uh, pretty impressed by it. We had a really vivid, uh, brightly colored backdrop. So it was, it was pretty impressive when, when we were first firing this up and, and doing some of the benchmarks and stuff on it. Um, for a stock screen, it's, it's one of the, the better screens that I've seen for stock. You do have the option to upgrade it though. <clears throat> the, uh, the upgrades aren't terribly expensive either. So uh, for someone who has a huge importance on um, the color accuracy or they just want their games to be as vivid as possible, um, the 95% gamut's offered both in a, in a matte finish and a glossy. So you, you've got the option of, of being able to get um, that accuracy in the color, plus uh, if, you, if you prefer a matte finish screen, you can do so. And I believe it's about $95, so it's, it's not terribly expensive when it comes down to it. Um, but for those of you who don't want to spend the money on, on the, uh, the upgraded screen, the standard one is, is pretty good as far as glossy screens go. It is an LG. <clears throat> um, I'm trying to give you an idea here of, of screen wash. And I'm using as soft a light as I can here to light this up for you so that we're not getting any uh, unneeded wash on it. But as you can see, even at, even at more extreme angles, it's doing a pretty good job. Uh, we're washing here at maybe, well, I'd say probably the 65% mark, but it's not even a full wash. I can still read everything that's on the screen here, even when I'm darn near, uh, you know, 90 degrees. So pretty, pretty impressive from your side viewing angles. Uh, you know, if you were watching a, you know, a couple pair of people were watching a movie or something, you, you would be, you know, you wouldn't be disappointed, I would say, if you, if you had to sit too far. I mean, it, of course, it, it does get more brighter and, and uh, better colors and things like that as you get to the center. Um, as, you, as you tip, of course, just any, any screen as you go, as you go with, the, uh, with a vertical, uh, the wash is going to be more... Uh, drastic, if you will. Uh, I'm I'm seeing a wash here. You know, probably it's washing at about that. 
so if I'm looking at it straight on. Um, but there's really no screen that's ever been fantastic at that. The 95% the gamut screens do have a considerably better uh, viewing angle um, than, than the standard screens do, um, but that's just their nature. Um, one of the nice things, though, as we're getting underneath of it here, our wash isn't quite as drastic. I mean, you can definitely notice it, but uh, for some reason, if you're using your laptop like this, then uh, it's not as bad as, as uh, some of the laptops I've seen. But for, for the way that most people use their laptop, uh, the screen is going to look really good. Uh, and it only gets better. <clears throat> uh, one of the things that, that you can do, uh, especially if you get the 95% gamut screen, those, those, do, a, those do really, uh, really great in, the, in our, our calibration. Uh, that's one of the things that I think, uh, the biggest thing I noticed um, <clears throat> on our machines is that 95% gamut screen is really great, but if you let us professionally calibrate it, it's, it's fantastic. And I think anyone who has, has purchased that from us can, can tell you just how incredible the, the screen looks to have it professionally calibrated. And once again, that's not terribly expensive either. Uh, so it's just one of the things that we do you know, for you just to, to give you that, that better experience. Or you know, maybe you're a photographer or videographer and you need, you need that accuracy, then it's, it's, an, it's a no-brainer. And you don't have to pay the $500 the program uh, cost to do it either. We'll go ahead and do that for you professionally and, and get it all set up. Uh, we, we're going to show you some thermal images here that we've taken uh, with, a, with our cool new gun here that we've got that'll show you uh, some, some a, a kind of an in-depth look, if you will. It's a full thermal image of what the computer looks like. You can, you can tell where the temps are. You can, uh, you can tell what they are in the first place, but you can tell the hot spots of the computer. It'll literally show you in a thermal image exactly what, uh, <clears throat> exactly what, uh, what your computer's doing. But this, the, you'll be able to see all the different uh, thermal images. And as you can see, uh, the areas where that little uh, crosshair, if you will, is pointing to, that's, that we're measuring that point's uh, thermal. So we're going to swing a few uh, different images across here to show you uh, you know, the, the hot points, if you will, of, of where the computer is and, and how hot the keyboard is. But I'll tell you right now, um, it's not hotter, like, as far as the keyboard's concerned, it's, it's no warmer than, it's actually cooler than, um, than your skin will be, uh, which is kind of the point at which something will feel hotter than you. So Sager's done a great job of keeping the, the touch areas cool and um, you know, it'll be cold to the touch, and it's it's just it's running really hard right now, and it's not uh, it's not even really breaking a sweat. Uh, the the cooling I will say on this computer is is quite impressive, especially you know once you start playing around with uh, better thermal uh, coolants as well. You know, we offer Icy Diamond, which is widely considered one of the better out there. Um, but Sager's done a good job here, and this will this will give you a, a a neat view so that you can truly see. Uh, the temperature points on this computer and, and what sort of uh, heat you can you can expect out of this machine. All right, guys, we're uh, this is one of the common things we had asked here is to have a peek at the the BIOS here. A lot of people want to see that, so I thought I'd give you a little showing of um, standard options that uh, Sager gives you on the BIOS. I, I know a lot of desktop folks get always disappointed with uh, BIOS inside laptops. And, you know, that's just going to be the way it is. The manufacturers, and this goes true with any laptop that you get, they, they don't give you a lot, of, uh, a lot of leeway like the desktop manufacturers do. You just don't see it. Um, <clears throat> Sager's no, no different from, from those guys. They, they do uh, give you some, some decent options, um, just little things that you can change, way, ways that you can set stuff up. Uh, as you can see here, this is our main page where we're going to just see our memory, the motherboard series, our BIOS and firmware revision. Um, that's something that, that Sager definitely likes to make changes to and upgrades as they need them. Um, shows you your video card in here too, which is, it's, that's the first time they've done that. <clears throat> um, a couple of things here. Th this particular model, even though it's equipped with it, isn't, isn't set up for that uh, rapid start technology. But this is where you're going to set that up. Um, once you're in here, you can, you can enable it even though it's telling us that no valid uh, partition was found for it. Um, the thing is, is that to set it up, you're going to pop down here to the SATA mode. Um, when you have that 
that uh, mSATA plus another SSD in there. You can switch it to RAID mode. If I did that, we'd have to reinstall the OS on here. Um, currently, it's just set up as to be separate in AHCI mode. But um, to set up that rapid storage technology, that rapid start technology, set them to RAID mode. Uh, then, you, of course, we're going to turn our turn our uh, rapid start on, and then you'd load your OS like normal, and that that's where you'd get your your improved performance there. Um, some of the other options here, we're going to pop under, whoops, doesn't give us a lot on uh, chipset control, though it does let us control Bluetooth power, so you can enable or disable that. Uh, Intel's anti-theft and legacy USB support, whether or not you want it to, to take the old USB ports. Um, you can remove the boot logo for someone who doesn't like the, the Sager, that's fine. You can get, go back to the old Clevo logo. Um, whether or not you want it to, to beep when you turn it on and a low battery alarm will beep there for you. Um, you can set a supervisor password to the BIOS, change your boot options here, it gives you three there. Um, just your anything that's installed here, it's going to show you here, it's going to show us what hard drives we've got installed. Uh, if we had another hard drive installed in the optical bay, we'd, we'd see that here as well um, as we sneak out there. And this is telling us if we wanted to boot from the, the Ethernet card, but very few chances that we need to do that. Um, other than that, it really doesn't give uh, us a ton of of options. To to be honest, it's it's very typical of a of a laptop BIOS. It, it shows you what it needs to show you, and it gives the options that it needs to give you. But you won't see any overclocking or uh, voltage changes or anything like that in, in a BIOS uh, on a laptop. It's it's just so super rare. Uh, and honestly, of the ones that we've seen them do it on, uh, those are the ones we tended to have people uh, have accidents with, uh, which I'm pretty sure is the reason why they don't do it since the power supply, uh, which for this one, I'll give you a look at it, is, uh, is 180 watt. Uh, so really, uh, you don't get the, you know, High, uh, high possibilities for power supply wattages and voltages like you do on a desktop. Uh, you are limited and you don't want to push this thing to the point where it's going to pop or um, or worse or get in there to get hot enough as it is. Um, but th there's our BIOS and, and uh, um, not a, a ton to it but that's, uh, that's what we've got. Alright, we're going to have a look here at the inside of, of uh, of our laptop here. Uh, as you can see the, the hard drive base just got the one uh, one bay so it's it's quick to open it's just two screws uh, quick to just replace that it's it's very fast to, to replace uh, if you wanted to replace that. Uh, honestly uh, one of the beautiful things about Sager is that you do have full access to the machine um, and I think there were four screws that I had to undo just to get this whole bottom plate off so that was really nice. Um, one great thing about Sager, and it's always been been that way, is that if say you want to replace this processor, um, you know you want to get the machine now with a Sandy Bridge and upgrade to um, whatever the next thing is um, later. This certainly will support that, so you could do that upgrade yourself. Um, as, as you see, that one of the changes that I, I noticed that they made from previous years, especially in the CPU, is that. Um, this, the heat piping is a lot shorter, so it's it's going to get to to your heat sink faster. Um, maybe one of the reasons why it's cooling, I've noticed, is is even an improvement over last year. Um, we do have two of our RAM sticks here that are easy to uh, to reach. The other two, just like uh, last year's model, when they added uh, the extra two to give us a total of four, they've put that into the keyboard. Um, and if you want, I'm, I'm sure that that uh, we could drum up um, a removal guide on getting to that RAM if if it's not um, a, easily apparent to you on how to access it. Um, they have wasn't too bad last year. I'm sure this uh, design isn't bad either. Um, but as you can see, we we have a super woofer here. Uh, one single fan. They're pretty good size. Um, I think they are a little bit larger than the previous series. Uh, one of the nice things they did, instead of making them both the same smaller size, which is what they were uh, on the previous series, they did make the GPU fan larger. Um, the GPU it does sit here. <clears throat> um, it is user upgradable. So as long as uh, 
the stars align and they make the card in the exact same MXM format, uh, you certainly could replace this uh, 675 or 670 or whatever you get it uh, with. Uh, you could replace that with a different card later on down the road. Uh, and very easily, as you can see, just four screws and, and or I guess six screws and you're done. Same thing with the processor. Very easy to uh, to remove. There's no you break it, you bought it stickers on there. It doesn't void your warranty. Uh, obviously, they won't cover the new processor that you put in there and, unless you had them install it. But, uh, you know, there's it's not going to do anything to the support that you get for the rest of, of the machine. Um, battery bay is here. It doesn't have a huge battery. Uh, the battery is uh, 5200 milliamp, 76.96 uh, uh, watt hour. Uh, so a decent battery. It's, it's a little bit better than uh, 4,800 milliamp batteries that they were shipping with the last series. Um, other than that, the uh, the other things that you'll need are going to also be under the the keyboard as well, in addition to to those uh, the other two sticks of RAM. But um, oh yeah, we forgot this is the new new little guy here. That's that uh, that M SATA that we were talking about. Uh, this is the little port for it. This is an 80 gig uh, stick, if you will, there. It's not your traditional type of hard drive. It is in uh, flash looking, and it almost looks like a big Wi-Fi card, to be honest with you. Um, but it is, it is uh, designed that way so that it can fit on a PCI bus there is what it's on. Um, so pretty, pretty cool new little technology that they've I've uh, had in desktops here for a season, but uh, this is new to the laptop world. Thank you for watching uh, Exotic PC's review of the new uh, Sager NP9150. Uh, I know it's going to be a, an awesome model and, and uh, be something if you want to check it out. Check out all of our customization options and all the features. Uh, like uh, you know some of the, the finish options, we do offer a new uh, fully encased carbon fiber option which just looks awesome uh, especially if you're someone who wants uh, some more added protection for their laptop <clears throat> from the bangs and scrapes and stuff it's it's a really cool option uh, we do all that custom in-house here as well as all of our different finishes and stuff that we can put on the outside uh, <clears throat> of the computer that'll all be there as well as any of your other processor options and things like that uh, you can go to www.xoticpc.com, that's exoticpc.com, uh, to take a look at it, as well as a whole slew of our other uh, laptops that we carry. Thanks again, and, and uh, have a great evening.